Hey guys, welcome to the next flame quick tip. Now this one is going to be in response to lots of questions and comments I've gotten regarding the commercial breakdown for the keg, which was um, morphing uh, and blending between two different shots. So this one's just gonna be uh, combining these two takes. So we've got one take here um, of just the box getting picked up and put down and then another take just here um, with the same motion, but obviously different different box and uh, different point in time, different lighting, different uh, camera angle. So we're not gonna obviously finish the whole shot, but it's gonna show how, uh, how to approach this technique. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just opening this guy here and I'm just gonna kind of scrub through and the, I guess the process for these is just finding the right spot where you think a, a morph would make sense and kind of uh, you can get away with. Um, for me, it's somewhere kind of around here because if I look at the uh, the other bit of footage, you see we've got the same kind of motion happening. Um, so I'm going to open this guy as our base, um, which is our main move. I'm just going to drag this guy and drop him on, and then I'm just going to look at the result and change it, uh, turn comp on and just put it to difference. And I'm just going to press M, and I'm using smoke shortcuts for this, and I'm just going to scrub along to a point where I feel like it makes sense and where they're kind of in similar similar areas. So. For me, just scrubbing through somewhere somewhere here maybe feels good because the hands are kind of in similar spots. But um, again, I'm just going to go effects and then add a 2D transform to this top layer and just repo it just a little bit and move it up in Y just a little bit as well. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just to kind of tee it up because I'm aiming for the morph to kind of happen somewhere here to here so it's gonna happen you know over a space of like six or eight frames so I'm just gonna toggle off the comp for now and just select both the clips and just go effects and leave on selection as flow graph and go create batch effects now I don't need these comps or the mucks which hold the cut points I'm just gonna throw them away now the first thing I want to do is just go to all nodes and press D and grab the distort and my incoming is going to be my my base layer, which was the, the clip we matched to, if I press F4, and my outgoing is going to be this uh, 2D transformer, which we matched to it. So I'm just going to press F4, and if I go F1, and first thing again is to change from warp to morph, and now if I go F1, F4, we can see it toggles like we'd expect. Now the first thing I want to do is, so front one, I should actually pipe these the other way because I wanted to go around the other way. So that's that's my bad. So that's going to be my in, incoming. Actually, that's the wrong way around. So it is the right way around. So input one to input two. So again, back to here. I'm just going to try and find the spot where I felt like it worked. And if I just scrub through and just toggle, just using the front toggle, somewhere here felt like a pretty good spot. I might just go back or forward a little bit just to kind of see where this feels good. And somewhere here feels good. So somewhere around 62 and we'll say to 72. So it'll be a 10, 10 frame morph. So I'm gonna to go to 62 and make sure I'm on the front one toggle. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just go to add spline. And I'm just gonna draw a shape that matches the contours of this front face of the box. And I'm just gonna control drag and just press spacebar B and break the tangents. And just press spacebar M to go back to move mode. Now. Before I animate these, because this is moving footage, what I want is point consistency. Um, and in the first uh, morph tutorials I did, I actually just drew two separate shapes and tried to match the splines. Um, whereas this technique, I'm gonna be using this exact same shape and um, I'll show you how. So I'm just gonna press escape to go to the schematic. I'm just gonna control drag around these guys and just press duplicate. I'm gonna grab this guy by holding alt so I can select the whole spline and just control drag around them. Press F4 sorry, F1, so I can see it pre-distort, and then press toggle between the front one to the front two. And now with these splines selected, this won't work if these aren't selected. So again, these have to be selected. And I'm just gonna press toggle input. And now you see it's giving me the exact same spline um, as the shape I drew in front one. So what I'm gonna do now is just grab the spline, again, pre-keyframes, pre and just match these up. Really, really simple and quick. And again, we're on frame 62, so we, if you remember, it was we're gonna do it from 62 to 72, so a 10 frame morph. 
Now the next step is uh, obviously tracking and animating these splines. Now there's heaps of ways you can do this. Uh, there's no right or wrong way. It just depends what you can get away with. You could always uh, do a track in the action G mask and then uh, copy and paste the data through the axes. Um, again, it depends on how much movement there is. But for this, um, because it's, it's fairly subtle, I'm just going to go and first of all see how, where I get to with um, a track. So I'm just going to go to front one and then make sure in my track axes that it's selected to front one. And I'm going to turn on rotate and just go to track axes. And you know this might work, it might not. So I'm just going to press control and just select this area and then control and select that corner. And I'm just going to analyze forward somewhere there and we're in the good spot because we were aiming for 72 and if I press shift on the actual shift you can see our keyframes I'm just gonna press return and if I scrub through it's actually not doing what I wanted it to it might be front one or front two it looks like front two got the keyframes so I'm going to actually get rid of that and don't know why that happened but it did so again I'm gonna go back to 62 and for this, it's going to be fine just to, uh, to animate this by hand. So for front one, I'm just going to go to 62 and then just press 72 and just select the spline and just pull along and pull down to match. And then again, I'm just going to scrub through and tighten these up as much as I can. Again, like this is a real job, you'd do this pretty tight. And uh, obviously, you'd have a clean plate for the background. Um, again, this is just to kind of show how you can work with blending two takes and I scrub through and just frame through again I'm just going to tighten this up and just again I'm control control dragging just to get these to the right spot and again because it happens over a space of 10 frames it's not too painful having to keyframe this and again I'm just control dragging cleaning these guys up and dropping that down and for the last frame on 72 I'll get it tight and we have a look and scrub through you see that's gonna do for this example um, that one's a little bit off so I'll pull that in now again I need to do the same thing for the other shape so if I press again viewing uh, F1 I don't want to be looking at F4 because it's gonna be showing me the post morph which I don't want so F1 and then again I'm gonna to toggle from front one to front two and do the exact same thing so I'm gonna jump back to frame 62 select my shape and just reassign it and then jump to 72 and do the same thing. Just I'm just eyeing these in. You can even uh, track the shape so you could track the points if you wanted, like you're used to in a normal G mask. But for this, just doing the, the hand track is going to be more than fine. So again, I'm just dragging these along, get into spots where I think it's going to work. And if I scrub over those frames, it's not too bad up until here. So again, I'll just pull these over and step through again we'll get away with murder on this because it's happening with motion and we'll be able to hide behind kind of roughness and again it's not production ready it's just the technique so if I scrub through that's doing what I want over those frames so it's from 62 to 72 and now again I'll press escape to go back to schematic and I'm going to go from tools to link and I'm going to link input one source to input to source and now they're linked and if I press F4 and I scrub through you see the interpolation gets applied to the timeline duration by default but I'm just going to alt click that so it's zeroed out because I know at 62 is when I want to start so I'm just going to set some manual keys and then go to 72 and pull up all the way and press F4 and if I scrub through we're getting some weird stuff might be how this is rigged up I'm not sure I'll just try and troubleshoot but you see we're getting a good a good result just for the initial uh, blend of that area we tracked obviously everything else is doing very very weird stuff um, and again if we toggle correspondence we can see what it's doing and it's doing it well so what we want to do now um, again I'm just pressing F1 F4 and we see it's doesn't look like it's behaving correctly and to be honest I've kind of found this bug out sometimes in terms of how these are kind of translate and sometimes you do it right and then it doesn't work but you know could be me probably is me so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna do a shape now for this side so on frame 62 I'm gonna to go to front one 
go to add spline and just add a spline that matches the rectangle on the side and control drag spacebar B and select those points and again escape and control drag around these points and go duplicate alt drag these guys select the whole shape F1 toggle to front two and toggle input and I'm gonna do the same thing just line this up let's pull all the way down and that's lined up and I wonder if that error is to do with the uh, the little axes that happened before so I might just do add axes and toggle them in and see if the morph looks any better but it actually doesn't which is probably again something I've done but you'll get the gist so again back to these splines 62 and then I'm going to go to 72 and I'm on front two just to make sure and again I'm just going to drag these points to where they make sense to match the shape and somewhere there is alright again just a couple couple little keyframes just to help this guy out and again there's just the random frames where these just need help because it's pretty fairly organic movement and just keen through just to see and I'm happy with that for now so we've got a front one and I'll keyframe the other guy and again frame 72 I'm just going to control drag and try and line these up as best I can and if we again if we scrub through I'm just going to clean these up in the between frames jumping through just to clean them up again it's not a work of art and if we scrub through that's doing what we want I'm just going to press escape and then go back to link and link these two guys and F1 F4 and again for this I'm actually going to see if it was something I did with these shapes because when that corruption happens it's usually due with the tracker from my experience so now I just have these two shapes selected the newest ones and I'm just going to go to frame 62 and pull these down and go to there and it's 100 and it is actually doing something weird again because it should be working oh, okay I was uh, I was viewing front so again I'm gonna go to 62 and just alt click on these guys to zero them out pull down and there's no keyframes and then go to 72 step one frame pull up and pull up on the blend and it's doing something closer to what we want and again F1 F4 blending between those two guys pretty well uh, again the blend needs to be keyframed so I'll give it one sec blend back to zero and now that area is behaving like we'd expect so again this technique is can be cumbersome but I mean the next the next part I guess that's pretty important again we're not going to go through all of this because you would want a clean plate for the background and probably rotor the hands and it's worth noting you can recycle the G masks for this technique and load them in here um, but for this, the next thing I'll show you is that happens a lot with uh, kind of advanced morphing is uh, kind of when bits go off the edge. So I'm just going to do the fingers for this, just um, just the thumb actually. So I ba go back to front one and go to frame 62 and just go to add spline. And I'm just going to draw a spline that matches the thumb. And again, you'd want this pretty tight if you were doing this for a real job. And I'm just going to press finish. And again, escape, control drag, and then duplicate. Grab my shape, select the whole thing, press F1. And we're, again, we're going to toggle to front two. And then I'm going to toggle input again. So again, we've got our shape from uh, the first spline we did, and it has the exact same amount of splines. I'm going to select that shape on the same frame, again, pre keyframes, and just line it up as best I can. It's going to, again, it's going to be pretty crude, but hopefully this will give you guys a good understanding of how this tool works with more advanced uh, morphing techniques inside of Flame. So there we are on that frame and again I'm going to go to frame 72 and just tighten up the splines just pulling down, pulling across here and pulling out there and again I'm just going to scrub through and just choose the bit where it drifts the most pull along you know again it's can be cumbersome but the payoffs usually good at the end of morphs and I'm happy with that so I'm going to toggle now to the incoming clip and do the same thing so I'm going to go to frame 72 again just grab these splines pull them along pull them out here and just pull them off to the side 
and we'll see I again I need to just kind of scrub through and adjust in the middle and what we'll hopefully get after this is a pretty good result just for this uh, this thumb area so I'm going to again jump to that frame control drag and just get them in the right spot and again we're going to go back to link and link the income into the input to source F4 and again we need to set our keyframe so I'm going to go 62 pull down on interpolation and set a keyframe on blend and just scrub behind just to make sure they're not doing anything and then go straight to frame 72 pull up on interpolation and if we look at that now the thumb part is morphing quite well um, but again like uh, especially on bits here where it's off frame uh, that can be a problem, especially if you don't have any extra frames or extra res to kind of punch into. So there is a little preference for this guy, um, which is uh, the tiling, texture tiling. So if we turn on repeat and then choose partial, it can help. Um, you can choose a higher tiling pattern, but if I go back to the, the preferences, you see it's, it's not doing too bad. And yeah, it, it does a job. And again, like the tighter the splines, the better. Um, I'm going to try just for the sake of this, just to hopefully help you guys along. I'm just going to do one more shape again, the front shape that we threw away. So I'm going to go back to frame 62 again, make sure I'm on front one, and again, viewing F1, so the input. I'm just going to go add spline, and again, just really, really crude, but hopefully helpful. And it's going to break those points. And then again, escape, control drag, duplicate. And then alt drag those guys, control drag select, F1, toggle to input two, and then go toggle input with that shape selected. And we got our exact copy of that shape. And again, I'm just gonna match these up on this frame and then jump to 72 again. And again, these are very crude, but hopefully helpful. And again, just stepping through really really loose uh, keyframes more about the process for this because for me personally the manual was pretty confusing there we go that works I'm going to again toggle to input 2 sorry input 1 control drag it's doing what I want and again jump to 72 control drag and just make this shape line up as best as I can Again, for this example, that's going to work. So I'm going to press escape again, go back to link, link these guys, go back to select F4, and again, set my keys. So again, 62, set a zero keyframe, set a keyframe here, 72, pull up on interpolation. And you can see already, just scrubbing through how much that area, the areas we've kind of honed for this are working a lot better. And again, the more you want uh, a morph to work, the more shapes you add. Uh, there's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a long little rabbit hole to go down, but hopefully this, uh, this technique and uh, the way I've shown you guys makes sense. Um, I hope it's useful and uh, stay tuned for more.